Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, Blue Origin's new Shepherd flies for the seventh time. Dasso ends Falcon 5X program. An Australian company wants to host the world's first flying car race. Hello, I'm Laura Hudson. It's December 15th, and this is Airborne Unlimited. Blue Origin's new Shepard made its seventh test flight Tuesday afternoon at the company's launch site in West Texas. The mission included the first test of Crew Capsule 2.0 and carried out 12 commercial research and education payloads. According to data provided by Blue Origin, the launch took place at 10.59 Central Daylight Time and lasted just over 10 minutes. The booster reached an apogee of 322,032 feet AGL, while the capsule continued to an apogee of 322,405 feet AGL. With this successful test, Blue Origin appears to be on track to carry its first passengers on a suborbital flight as early as next year. But there are additional test flights to be conducted that could become a reality, and the company is not yet taking reservations for seats aboard the Crew Capsule 2.0. After the break, FAA releases beta test of online pilot records database. The dream is real. A truly affordable personal jet aircraft. The Subsonics personal jet kit is priced at only $42,000. Kit plus engine is still under $100K. Add instruments, upholstery, and paint, and you're flying. It's time to put your money where your bucket list is. Learn more at sonicsaircraft.com. Welcome back. If you have a story suggestion for Airborne Unlimited, Aero TV, Airborne Unmanned, the AMA Drone Report, our website or podcast, just email to news-spy at aero-news.net. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. The FAA has released this beta test of its online pilot records database. The PRD will expedite the sharing of pilot records to help commercial airlines and operators make informed hiring decisions. As a result of a number of airline tragedies, including the 2009 Colgan Air Flight 3407 crash, the Airline Safety and Federal Aviation Administration Extension Act of 2010 was passed and signed into law. This legislation, among other things, established a pilot record database. The U.S. House of Representatives has passed legislation to strengthen and streamline security for general aviation and charter operators. The bill, Securing General Aviation and Commercial Charter Air Carrier Service Act of 2017, sponsored by Representative Ron Estes, would improve security procedures for general aviation and commercial charter air carriers. A new project at Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University's Daytona Beach, Florida campus, funded by a $1 million grant from the U.S. Department of Commerce through its Economic Development Administration, is expected to create 387 new jobs and spur $1.6 million in private investment. On December 11th, U.S. Secretary of Commerce Wilbur Ross announced that a $1 million award to Embry-Riddle will be used to establish a new aviation and engineering research center in Florida. The second longest serving pilot for the Blades aerobatic team has left the team after 10 seasons. The Blades says it is with heavy hearts that the Blades are saying farewell to Mark Cutmore, their second longest serving pilot. Cuddy completed 10 display seasons with the Blades, accumulating over 2,000 hours in the extra 300 making him one of the most experienced pilots of this aircraft type in the world. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. Dassault Aviation has initiated the termination process of the Silvercrest contract, leading to the end of the Falcon 5X program, and announces the launch of a new Falcon program with an entry into service in 2022. The delivery of compliant Silvercrest engines was originally planned for the end of 2013 in accordance with the Falcon 5X flight test schedule, 
but Safran was plagued with recurrent technical issues during development. In 2015 and 2016, major technical issues led Safran to announce a new schedule, leading to the delivery of engines by the end of 2017. Consequently, Dassault had to postpone the entry into service of the Falcon 5X from 2017 to 2020, a three-year delay. This slippage caused customers concerns and order cancellations, including 12 in 2016 alone. The Falcon 5X performed its maiden flight on July 5, 2017, but in the fall of 2017, Safran experienced issues with a high-pressure compressor and informed Dassault Aviation of an additional delay and new performance shortfall, making the 2020 entry into service of the aircraft impossible. Considering the magnitude of risk involved both on the technical and schedule aspects of the Silvercrest program, Dassault Aviation has begun the termination process of the Silvercrest contract, leading to the end of the Falcon 5X program. After these messages, an Australian company wants to host the world's first flying car race. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. The Bristel Light Sport Aircraft is what you are looking for. The Bristel is wider than a Cirrus, faster than a Skyhawk, offers more storage than a Husky, and comes standard with Garmin Avionics. So what are you waiting for? Visit Bristel.com to find out how you can get into a Bristel today. Welcome back. What might you get if you cross the Formula One race car with a racing quadcopter? Apparently, it would be the Alada Airspeeder Mark I, which an Australian company hopes to have racing next summer. The concept has been under development in tight secrecy for two years. Now the concept is ready for crowdfunding, and a presence has been established on Kickstarter. The Alada MK1 is the first iteration of Airspeeder made by Alada. This simple lightweight design was built with cost and performance as the primary concerns. A one-third scale model has been flown and a full-size prototype is taking shape. To be able to carry a full-size human analog, the airspeeder is powered by a set of 50 kilowatt electric motors and a custom battery system. The company says that should lead to a small drone performance and a large form factor speeder. We wanted people to look at the curves of the MK1 and instantly know that it is a flying car, invoking a passion for a sport unlike any other. The ultimate goal is to hold the world's first flying car race in the Australian desert in 2018. Stay tuned. Well, that's our program for today. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is currently on our winter schedule and is streamed Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, alternating with Airborne Unmanned on Tuesday and the AMA Drone Report each Thursday. Additional news bulletins may be posted for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe and do check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Have a great weekend and see you Monday.